Hello everyone. Today we are working with a single stage drop-in trigger from Battleborn's Best. This is a simple install video. Uh, this trigger is a two to six pound adjustable and there are a couple of tips and tricks to help you to get this installed just right. So let me show you. We're going to put it into an Anderson receiver and these triggers come with the anti-walk pins and a little hex tool. So we're going to start off with the anti-walk pins. So the trigger is going to drop in right down the center there. And you're going to line your pins up. Now this does come with a little helper tool. Um, it's designed to screw into the front of the anti-walk pins, but usually you can just line up the holes and then drop them in yourself. So it's nice to have, but you don't really need it. Just like that. And then these screw in, as you might expect. And then the hex tool, you just tighten them down. Okay, I've got my, my pins tightened down. Uh, the, the key to these is they're made for any receiver, um, so they might have just a little bit of play, but you don't want to torque these down like extreme, as it put a lot of pressure on the weakest part of the pin, which is where the threading is, and when you go to fire, it can either strip it or break the pin, so you don't need to torque them down. They're not going to come loose. They are coated. Um, so once those are in, a lot of people, the mistake they make with this is they will put the anti-walk pins in and then they think they're done. Um, for some receivers that might be the case, but a lot of times if you test this, if you do a safety reset, a lot of the time it will continue on. And so the key to avoiding a safety reset is to make sure that your tension screws, which are these right here, um, if you open up this trigger all the way, if you look down into the canal here, there are two holes on either side of this center centerpiece. And those are tension screws. And what you're supposed to do is tighten them down and they'll hold the trigger steady within the housing. Now, as with this one, this one just went in and it works fine. But I always use the tension screws so that it's a nice solid fit. Now, if you look down into where you're supposed to put the hex in there, a lot of the time the hammer spring will be in the way. So there's an easy way to fix that though. I usually take like a blade and you can just move this spring over a little bit and that'll allow you to um, to get your hex screw in there. So with this one, I'm going to move those over just a tad. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my hex tool. I'm going to fit it into the hole here. And then you don't need to torque it down too much. Just about that much and boom got the other one so there's kind of a sweet spot um, your best performance on the trigger is going to be with the screw tension screws down but not over torqued and you don't want to have them too loose so you're going to want to test your safety reset to make sure that everything's functioning before you head out to the range now once it's installed I did say it's adjustable. The little center piece right here, that's what you use to um, adjust the poundage on this one. As it comes out of the box, it's set up for about, say, three pounds or so. Um, but if you want to increase the pounds, you put that in, and about a single rotation clockwise will give you an extra pound. And the same is true if you want to go down on the poundage. Just reverse it and it's easy to um, adjust that once it's installed you can you can 
get the hex tool in there so you can kind of play around with it and find out what you know what feels comfortable for you and that's about it um, they're super easy to install you just got to make sure that you use your tension tension screws and that you don't over torque your anti-walk pins and that's it enjoy <laughs>